So here's our bathroom that we're going to be remodeling. We're going to really focus on the shower. We've got a brand new Castico shower system that we're going to be installing in here. This is a really old uh, one piece new construction uh, bathtub and you can see it's really worn out. Um, it's lasted the clients quite a while, but we need new faucets. We need to upgrade the vent fan. We've already taken the cover off. We're gonna to try to take this tile down. We're even gonna to attempt to take this bulkhead down. Um, but the clients really wanna keep this um, tile on the wall on both sides. So we're gonna to have to be really careful how we pull this thing out. But you can even see they've worked on it. They've repaired a little bit on this tub. But we're gonna do our best to uh, upgrade the shower system. And I'm gonna take you through the steps of installing one of these Castico shower systems on what I would consider is a traditional bathroom uh, bathtub replacement unit. So follow along, hope you guys enjoy. Don't forget to like and subscribe. All right, so this is what we're looking at currently. We got all of our waterproofing done and it turned out really well. We like that John's Manville Go board and we are ready to receive our base. We had to do a little floor repair over here. We're still working on that. Uh, we spray foam the cracks just to make sure that we don't have anything coming up through our subfloor. Um, we got our flooring protection down here, but we've got, we've got a nice waterproof system here that we can work with. We got our mixing valve installed. We got our uh, shower neck fitting installed, our drop air L. We've got new drywall on the ceiling up here. We're gonna tie into this existing drywall. We're gonna sand this off. That way we can tape this in. We've got a nice new light fixture coming, uh, recessed light. Uh, we were actually able to remove the tub. This is rare that you can do this, but if you're very careful, um, we were able to actually cut the flange of the tub and we were able to maintain the client's tile. They wanted to keep that tile. Um, we, we do have a piece that we can put up here that we're gonna fill in, but we are just about ready for our base. So we're gonna do a little bit of work on that real quick. All right, so we've got to shave off just a little bit of this base we're just a little bit too long, specifically in the front. So we've got a pencil mark here that we're gonna to try to freehand cut this. We don't have a wet saw right now, but you can see we just gotta take off maybe a quarter inch at the front down to nothing at the back. So this is like a, I believe the company calls it a solid stone composite, but it's supposed to cut pretty easy, whether you're cutting it dry or wet. So we've got a grinder with a uh, just a standard diamond rimmed disc and I've got my blower here so we're let's just go ahead and see what happens
All right, let's take a look at the finished product. Now we've got a little bit of chippage, but that's okay because our wall panels are gonna come down and they are actually gonna overlap this quite significantly. I believe the width of those wall panels are somewhere around a half inch. So we don't have to worry about any chippage. What's nice about the Castico products are um, any edge that's not exposed, you can cut, I believe, up to an inch and a half. So we actually could have cut an inch and a half off of this end if we would have needed to. Now the front edge is the only edge that's exposed on this unit. Now, something else to note, we've also already got our drain in. And something that we really like about the Castico product is it comes with a drain grill cover already. It's really, really nice. So we'll, we'll keep walking you through the process here. Next up, we need to install our flanges. All right, so here is the flange if you will, that goes on the shower base. And these are the screws that we have to use. Let me get, in, let me get out of the shadow here. We're, we're, we're in the bright sunny daylight. Um, so these are really small screws, fine thread with a cutter tip on the end of them. And they actually work very well. Let's go ahead and put one in here. All right, so you see how easy that is? You wouldn't think it would be, but it, it is. It's got this little channel for the screw to ride inside. Um, and that's a number one Phillips bit on this drill. Ain't that cool how that works? So in the instructions, it tells us to drop this down about a quarter inch. I'm guessing that's so that except sealant so that we can seal this flange. The reason that the flange doesn't come on it, I'm assuming, is because if you need to cut it down like we did, then you can install the flanges later. So it, it gives you some more customization, you know, a little more flexibility, if you will. Now this is an absolutely critical step in the entire Castico installation. That shower pan has to be as level as possible. If it's not level, it can really throw things out of whack. And you want to be able to set your panels and not have to worry about having gaps underneath it or gaps at the ceiling or the wall panels not lining up straight. You have to have the shower pan level if you want to do that. So what we're doing is we're mixing up about a bag of thin set or mortar and we already know that the floor is sagged slightly towards the shower valve. So we're going to put a little bit more thin set or mortar mix down towards that end of the shower and that way we can put a level on it and kind of tap that pan into place where it will sit perfectly level, not only across the length of the pan in the front of it, the 60 inch length, but also towards the depth of it. We want that as level as possible too. So we're putting on a nice generous amount of thin set on the floor to wet set that pan into. Now that we've got a nice layer of thin set on the floor, we're ready to set the shower base. Now notice the back of the shower base. There isn't any thin set on it. That's because we missed that step. Don't let that happen to you. Make sure you familiarize yourself with the installation instructions. This method of installation is not recommended, although thankfully we did not have any issues with it. You wanna make sure you back butter that shower base. Why is that? It's just like setting a large format tile. You always back butter tile. The same is true for the Castico shower bases. They want you to make sure you back butter that shower base before you drop it in the bed of mortar. So make sure you don't skip that step. We got busy and we just didn't think about it. It happens. Another thing to notice, we did use thin set in this application because the floor was out of level, but 
in the installation instructions, they do tell you that you can use construction adhesive and that could potentially speed up the installation process. So if they're telling you you can use it, I'm sure it would be just fine. So construction adhesive can be used in place of thin set if your floor is relatively level. We're now ready to seal the flange to the shower base. The manufacturer tells us to use silicone. We like to use Lexel because it's elastomeric, which means when materials move or expand and contract, the sealant will move with those materials and we don't have to risk failure here. And this is a very important detail to waterproof this shower. So we don't wanna skip this step. Now, one thing that we did, we walked away from it for the evening to allow that sealant to cure overnight. So that's a good idea, something to think about. We were towards the end of the day, the work day anyways, so we decided to just go ahead and walk away from the job site after sealing this area. All right, somewhat of an unusual circumstance, but the height of our ceiling is a little bit too short, so we can actually cut this off. They tell you not to cut any exposed edges. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a really nice job of cutting this top and really it's not exposed in the sense that it's going to be a budding drywall, the ceiling. Um, but we are going to do a good job of cutting this and we're going to probably caulk that joint too. So what we've done is we've clamped down a nice straight edge here, we've taped it, we've marked it, and we've got a traditional circular saw with a four inch or a four and a half inch, I believe, four inch, four and a half, whatever, diamond rimmed blade. So. We're gonna use that in conjunction with this blower and see how good it does. We don't have a wet saw for this, so we're just using what we have. All right, I think that did a really good job and you tape it to help prevent chippage on the material. So put our blower down, let's see what that turned out like. Go ahead. Hey, look at there did a really good job for not being a wet saw. I mean, there is virtually no chipping on that. And that's just a cheap, like I said, four inch diamond rimmed blade. This stuff cuts really, really well. We're super impressed how easy it cuts. Okay, so an important step in this entire um, installation of this Castigo product, now that we have our flange installed to our base. We've went ahead and we've sealed this. Now I need to seal it against the wall. So I'm using Lexel for that. We prefer Lexel um, over silicone it, because it's elastomeric. So if the materials move, the sealant will move with it and we won't have to worry about voids. So what they want you to do, they want you to have this nice and clean and basically all you have to do is, is put a bead right on the top of that flange like so. And what we're gonna do is once we get this beaded out of this gun here, we're just gonna tool it flat. 
on top of this flange. It's also important to seal up this corner. This corner obviously is a vulnerable spot, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Um, and once again, we have already sealed and tooled that. So here we go. I'll start in the corner. I'm just going to tool that out. Now I'm going to tool right over the flange with this stuff. And this is going to give you that seal that you need if in the very slight chance water actually gets back there. So we just, we just want this nice and flat to where the panel sits flat against the wall. So okay, so at this point we're going to start gluing our panels on now. I've already got um, section C and section D installed. And that's something that I wanted to talk about for just a second. Uh, this Casco shower kit, it's really hard to mess it up in the fact that they label everything for you. So obviously you've got your shower pan, but the wall panels are labeled A, B, C, and D on the back. So it's really difficult to um, get that messed up. They also have an arrow on the back of each panel that shows you that that indicates the top of the panel. And you want to pay close attention to that because if you have to cut off the top like we did, you want all of this um, natural rock look to, or granite look, whatever you want to call that, you want that all to line up. So we've got like some veins here and this next panel, when we get it installed, it's going to look like those veins just continue into the next panel. And what that does is it helps take your eyes away from the seams that are there, right? So you have to really pay close attention. Each panel has its specific place. So starting from left to right, A, B, C, and D. So we've got C installed, we've got D installed. Now we're gonna install panel number B or panel letter B, excuse me. What's nice is Castico gives you two different methods to adhere the wall panels to your waterproof membrane. We chose the construction adhesive method just because we felt like it was going to hold and it was a lot easier, not as much mess. They also detail using thin set. We just felt like that was going to be more time consuming and we thought, you know, in a conditioned space, it's going to make a little bit more of a mess. In a new construction home, I wouldn't be worried about it as much, but we used the Gorilla brand construction adhesive and once you place the panels, onto that wall, it was not coming off. We tried to move it with even um, a suction cup tool and it just would not hardly budge. It was amazing how strong and fast the hold was on that uh, Gorilla brand construction adhesive. So we will definitely use that method again in the future. So now that I've got wall panel B and C installed, we can go ahead and continue with wall panel A. And this one we really have to take some high dollar measurements on. So we not only need to get our height of the panel, but we also have to get the width of the panel and cut off because we're abutting um, this outside corner where there's gonna be tile and some other things going on. We also have to get our shower valve cut uh, to size so that that can be a little bit tricky. We got to take some high dollar measurements there and we've got to get our shower neck location. So we're going to go ahead and take a few measurements and uh, we'll write them down and then we'll double check them when we get outside and we start start trying to cut this stuff. So we'll go ahead and get our height first. So to make it easier on myself put a mark at the 10 inch from the top mark. Now I can just flip my tape over and I can get a mark from the bottom up and add 10 inches to it. And that way I get a little bit more accuracy that way. So uh, from the bottom to my 10 inch mark, we're looking at 71 and, oh, 71 and three quarter. That would be tight. So 80, 81 and three quarter. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna write that down on a piece of paper. So 81 and three quarter, and that's tight. So we wanna go a little bit less than that. Now I'm gonna do the exact same thing on this other side. I'm gonna come down, I'm gonna mark 10 inches, and then I'm gonna turn my tape over, and I'm gonna come up to from the bottom, and that is also 71 and three quarter. So 
It's really nice when you have a level base to work with and you have a relatively straight ceiling. Now on the base, we did have to bring it up and I'll show you that um, towards the end of the video um, just because of the floor was sagging so bad. And that's, that's part, of, part of the things that you get into, some of the things you get into on a remodel situation. So you've got to um, sometimes adapt the materials to your workspace. So we're at 71 and three quarters, 71 and three quarter plus 10 on both sides. So we're at an even 81 and three quarter. That makes it so much easier since I leveled that base and we have a straight ceiling. Now I can cut that off straight at a little, little bit less than 81 and three quarter. So I'm going to write that down. So what we've done is we've went ahead and pre-drilled a small hole right there for our valve body. So we, we've got its location and this is what we're using to cut that hole out. This is a five inch Diablo hole saw. Let's go ahead and see how good that cuts. It's just a standard hole saw, nothing special. So there you go. Now we've got a nice smooth hole. So that's another kind of advantage, I guess you would say, of working with this Castico product. You can use standard um, tools with it. Now, um, I wouldn't necessarily cut the end off like we did on this with a circular saw, a standard circular saw. We still like that diamond blade because this is going to be exposed and we don't want any chippage. But there's going to be an escutcheon ring or a... a, a a guard around this, whatever you want to call a beauty ring, that's going to hide that. But that actually did a really nice clean cut on this material. So. Okay, so we've got our shower panels from Castico installed, and now it's time to seal all of the joints. Castico tells us that we have to use a high quality sealant to seal these joints, and there's really not much higher quality than Clean Seal from Sashco. We use a lot of Sashco products. I've already outlined in this uh, video that we've used Sashco Lexcel, where it was a critical water connection, but this is a little bit different circumstance. Behind these panels were already waterproofed. These panels themselves are waterproof. So the only way water is getting back there is through these small cracks. And if it does, it's not really gonna cause a problem because it's gonna hit our waterproofing. However, you still need to use a waterproof sealant. That's why we use this product. This is Clean Seal. It is waterproof once it's dry. But what makes this really unique is it has these enzymes in it. This is made specifically for a kitchen or a bathroom because mold can't grow on it. So what better application than to use it on than in this brand new shower? All of these joints, not only were the panels abut each other, but also where the panels abut the ceiling, we're gonna use this clean seal so we don't ever have to worry about scrubbing. We don't ever have to worry about mold or mildew growing or collecting on this sealant. So that's why we're using this. 
Well, we're getting really close to the finish line. You know, for being the first time that we've ever installed one of these Castico shower units, it went amazingly well. Um, if you've ever installed any other type of shower system, this will be so easy for you. It was really fast, really easy. We did have a couple of days there extra that we added on just for um, remodeling purposes. You can see we put texture on the ceiling. We had to paint the ceiling. We had to wait for sealants to dry. Things like that get in the way. Obviously, we did some plumbing as well. So it took a little bit longer than just installing the panels and the base. But it is a really fast, easy system to install. I highly encourage you if you're looking into a shower remodel or an upgrade, look at the Castico products because we're just really impressed. We're going to go with it again. I'm going to try to sell some of this to some of my clients. I think they're really going to like it. This client in particular loved the way everything turned out and you know, we're just tying everything together with this sealant. It really makes those seams disappear, especially up close to the ceiling where those panels abut the ceiling. Everything just ties together and it becomes seamless. It's just, it's a really nice system. We're really impressed with it. Here's the finished product. The clients still have to do a little bit of touch-up painting. They're wanting to change the color of that wall, but this is complete and it turned out absolutely beautiful. Now, one thing that I don't think I've drawn anyone's attention to is the beautiful grate in the bottom of the shower base. Now, this is really cool because you can just take it out, clean it, put it back in. And Castico features different great designs. So I think this one is stainless steel, but they have different colors, different designs. They also have different colors of shower bases. They have a black one that's really nice. Full customization. This door is just a standard Delta shower door from Lowe's. Really nice install. Um, the shower turned out just great. I love the connection between the ceiling and the Castigo panels. I love how the veins line up and just continue to, to flow into the next panel. Isn't that interesting? Beautiful shower. The clients love it. We will be using more Castigo shower products in the future, so look for more videos. Hope you enjoyed this one. If you're interested in the Castico Alcove Shower Kit, it is available at the Home Depot. Check the description of this video for a link to the unit.